Cells, an Owner's Handbook by Carolyn Fisher. Hi, I'm Ellie. No, not the dog. Follow the arrow. I'm a cell, a skin cell actually, a skin cell who lives on er, the derriere of a Boston Terrier. Oh, you don't know what a cell is? Well, the dictionary says that a cell is the smallest structural and functional unit of an organism, which is typically microscopic and consists of cytoplasm and a nucleus enclosed in a membrane. Aren't you glad you asked? Wait a minute, can't you see me? Hmm, is that because we cells are so small that we're invisible to the naked eye? Let's zoom in. Here I am. Ellie the cell, 3,000 times magnification. Yeah, yeah, so I live on a dog's butt, or as I like to call it, the gluteus maximus. Let's carry on before we get, um, left behind. Congratulations! You are the owner of 37 trillion high-performance cells, give or take a few trillion. Human, 37 trillion cells. Me, one skin cell on the derriere of a Boston Terrier. Unicellular organisms are made up of just one cell. Amoeba, paramecium, diatome. Multicellular organisms are made up of many cells. Non-living things are not made of cells. Dirt, not made of cells. Water, not made of cells. Rocks, not made of cells. A cell is an itty bitty building block that stacks together with other cells to make dogs and humans and everything else that's alive. And I mean everything. Most cells are so small that you can't see them unless you use a microscope. If your left little toe was this big, a skin cell might be this big. I, Ellie the cell, would be this big. I'm tall for my age. If you looked at some of your cells through a microscope, you might see this. Skin cells magnified 1,500 times. Or this. Nerve cells magnified 500 times. Or these. Bone cells magnified 210 times. Red blood cells magnified 2,929 times. Muscle cells magnified 1,200 times. Ovum cells magnified 200 times. Sperm cells magnified 200 times. Different kinds of cells have different shapes and sizes to help them do different jobs, like making bones, making blood, making muscles, making babies. Zoom in closer and one of your cells might look like this. Inside each cell, you'll find smaller parts called organelles. Each organelle is a mini factory that does a special job. Nucleus, cell command center, holds instructions called DNA for making copies of cells and building the body. Lysosomes recycle old cell parts, bacteria, and viruses. Mitochondria make energy for the cell. Ribosomes, builders that make protein, which is used to construct cells. Cytosol, the jelly-like stuff that holds the organelles and nucleus. Cell membrane, encloses the cell's insides. Ooh, if I had known you were going to do a close-up, I would have combed my ribosomes. 
cells make new cells by copying themselves to grow bodies and to repair bodies. A time-lapse image of a cell copying itself to make two new cells. Like it? It's a selfie! I mean, a selfie from the last time I split. This is called mitosis. Some cells can divide two or three times per day. Others split two or three times per year. Dead and worn out cells are recycled and reused to make new cells. One cell will split into two. Two cells will split into four. Four cells will split into eight. Eight cells will split into 16. 16 cells will split into 32. 32 cells will split into 64. 64 cells will split into 128. 128 cells will split into 256. 256 cells will split into 512. 512 cells will split into 1024. And so on. Until all the parts of a body have the number of cells they need. Your cell's mitochondria need food, water, and oxygen to make energy for your body. So eat, drink, and don't forget to breathe. Lifetime Guarantee With proper recycling and replacement, you should have enough cells to last your whole life. Which reminds me, a skin cell divides about every 14 days. So... I got a split! The end. Bye! Bye! Every living thing is made up of different cells just like Ellie. Every part of your body is filled with cells doing special jobs. There are cells that help you move, cells to help you breathe, cells that fight off germs, even cells that help you think. Your cells have been a part of you since before you were born. They've been with you your whole life, but they're so tiny you can't see them without a microscope. Unless we built a model cell big enough to see and touch. But what can we use to build it? How about candy? Wait, stop, don't eat it yet. Remember the mini factories inside the cells called organelles? We'll use different candies to represent each one. The nerds can be ribosomes, where the proteins are made. We'll use a fireball for the nucleus, which is like the cell's library containing all the DNA information to make copies of cells and build the body. The rainbow belt will be the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It works with the ribosomes to make new proteins and membranes for the cell. And the fruit roll-up can be the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which forms containers called vesicles to move things around inside the cell. The gummy worms can be the Golgi apparatus, which is like the cell's shipping center, it packs things up to transport around the cell or to leave the cell. The malt balls can be lysosomes, which are vesicle packages that have digestive enzymes. They break down things the cell doesn't need, and they kill bacteria that invades the body. The M&Ms will be vacuoles, which are membrane sacs that the cell uses to store things. And the mini M&Ms will be vesicles, which are smaller sacs. The cell uses its vacuoles and vesicles like large and small boxes. The jelly beans will be the mitochondria, which uses enzymes to break down sugars and make cell fuel called ATP. This gives the cell energy. We'll use the Twizzlers to make centrioles and microtubules, which give the cell structure and help it divide. And we'll use Jello for the cytoplasm to hold it all together. Get ready to turn the candy into organelles. Unwrap the fruit roll-up and cut off a large section. We'll use this piece to make the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Then cut the gummy worms in half 
to make the Golgi apparatus. Next, cut the Twizzler into thirds. We'll leave two thirds as they are to be the centrioles and pull apart the last section to create microtubules. The candy organelles are ready. Now let's move on to the jello cytoplasm. Grab a heat safe bowl and spoon, a heat safe measuring cup, and have a grown up help you boil water. For each packet of jello, add one and a quarter cups of water. Stir the water as you pour in the jello to help it dissolve. At first, you'll be able to see little pieces of gelatin coating the back of the spoon. But just keep stirring the mixture for a few minutes. You'll know it's fully dissolved when you can't see any more particles of jello on the back of the spoon. When the mixture is fully dissolved, pour the jello into the bowl. Let the mixture sit at room temperature until it's cool enough to touch. Then you can add the organelles. First, add the fireball nucleus. You might want to use tongs, chopsticks, or even a spoon to help you. Roll up the fruit roll up and press it flat to create the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Then add this next to the nucleus. Get the sour rainbow belt ready. Bunch it together to create the rough endoplasmic reticulum and add that on the other side of the nucleus. Add a spoonful of NERD ribosomes to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. In a real cell, you can see the ribosomes spotting the rough endoplasmic reticulum, but the smooth endoplasmic reticulum has none. Add the gummy worm Golgi apparatus. Pile them up to look like the cell's shipping center. Add the malt balls near the Golgi apparatus to be the lysosomes. The lysosomes are vesicles that contain digestive enzymes. Usually they're found near the Golgi apparatus. However, malt balls float in jello, so our lysosomes will just sit on the surface. Add some jelly bean mitochondria. Remember, this is where the cell breaks down sugar to make ATP, which is what it uses for energy. Next, add the Twizzler centrioles and microtubules. They give the cell structure and help it divide. Now it's time for the M&M vacuoles and vesicles. These little containers can be found all over the cell. Sprinkle over some ribosomes. You don't even have to comb them first. And that's it, your cell is done. Get ready for a close up. Put it in the fridge for at least three hours or overnight. Wait until it's totally firm. Get ready to take it out of the bowl. Have a grown-up help you put an inch or so of hot water into a larger bowl and have a large plate and a towel nearby. This part goes pretty quickly, so get ready. Carefully dip the bottom of the small bowl into the hot water for 15 seconds. Then check to see if the edge of the jello will separate from the bowl and carefully pull it out. Set it down on the towel to dry off the bottom. Cover the bowl with the plate and turn them both upside down. Now the fun part. Lift off the bowl and there's the cell. You can give it a name if you want to. Zoom in close and take a selfie. On every square inch of your skin, there are 19 million cells just like this one. The area of the jello model cell came to about 16 inches. And 16 inches times 19 million cells is 304 million. So this model cell is 304 million times as big as a real cell. It's gigantic! When you finish taking selfies, you can dissect it. Look, there's the nucleus. Mmm, rough endoplasmic reticulum, anyone? Give it a taste for, um, science. Hey, not bad. Cytoplasm and vacuoles, my favorite.
For more information about receiving STEAM kits in the mail, visit the Kids and Families page at coosbaylibrary.org.